I'm Kim Santini, and I'm here with another art journaling lesson for you. Today's series of exercises and practices are designed to help invite a sense of calm into your world. Um, I know that's something that I certainly can use more of. And when I feel stressed or anxious or needing, seeking something specific like calm, I go to my journal looking for that in my practice helps me to build or manifest that for myself. So what I'm going to introduce to you today is a series of exercises that you can jump into in one session or you can stretch out over a period of time. They're designed to help you recognize the things that bring peace and soothe your own soul, gather them around you, and then spend time in reflection on them while you manifest a sense of inner peace for yourself, as well as projecting that out into the world. Grab your book, settle on in, and let's journal together. Okay, so there's multiple steps in this journaling practice that I'm gonna share with you today. And the first one is to gather some things that soothe you. Now you can tackle this all at once, or you can spread it out over the course of time, a period of time. And I want you to think about as you go through, walk through your home or your yard or whatever space you happen to be in uh, and, and think about, pay attention to the things that you see that, that make you smile. Um, a little bit internally and in, in a gentle way and take a moment to note those things and begin to gather them in a space. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. If you have a surface where you can set your things out and keep them staged there until you're ready to journal, you can um, set them there. You can also use your smartphone to take photographs of these things you could make a list of what they might be so that you can gather them later. Um, but really what I want you to do is to be plugged in and aware of the objects that make you feel loved, that make you feel safe, that make you feel comfortable. And they're gonna be different for everyone. They may be old photographs of family members, they could be, um, you could find these things in magazines or catalogs and cut them out. They don't actually have to be physical objects. They could also be words. They could be lyrics to a song. Um, I really wanna encourage you to expand your, um, expand your search to include things of all different types of nature. Um, so what I have here, are a few things from my home that I have, that I, that I continue to find uh, very peaceful and calming and soothing to look at. Um, another thing that I like to do in my, in my house is build little altars. And you'll see this, this um, plate here it has a number of objects on it that have um, sentimental value to me. And um, whenever I come across something that I feel is significant, I add it to a little plate or altar, and I have these all over my home. So in every room of my house, I auto automatically or already have a collection of things that I find very soothing. So what I want you to do is um, spend some time gathering or collecting these objects, and when you're ready to actively begin working with them, want you to settle down and, and place them all together in a space. Um, and your space is gonna look different depending on the sorts of objects that you have uh, gathered. But I want you to have them ready at hand and I want you to spend some time with them in quiet reflection. Uh, you can light a candle like I have over here. You can brew yourself uh, a mug of tea or make some sort of special beverage and sit with these objects and really look at them and ask yourself what they mean to you. Why do you think you're drawn to them? See if you can find a deeper understanding of the connection of um, why these objects are so appealing 
to you, what makes them uniquely your own. And then after you've spent some time doing that and maybe you've come to a few realizations, I want you to grab a pen or a pencil and some paper and write and write about them. Now, if you're a regular creative, you may be familiar with the concept of morning pages. The idea of morning pages is just sitting down and writing stream of consciousness, just dumping what's on your head before you get started into your day. It's an idea that was or is taught by uh, Julia Cameron, and there's actually an entire book on that called The Artist Way, if you're curious about that. So you can write your morning pages surrounded by these objects that soothe you. You could also just write directly in your art journal if you wish to do that. But I really want you to spend some time reflecting and writing about the significance of these objects. And then the next challenge, the next step in this is to define your own intention. I like to sit down with my journal and before I begin to work, I like to set an intention for myself, whether it's to play, whether it's to learn something about a new material, or whether it's to seek a particular uh, state of mind, I like to set that intention for myself. Um, and so I want you to think about your intention as well before you settle in and begin to gather supplies. So my intention today is that I am looking for, for peace, inner peace, as well as external peace. And um, that, is, that is what I am going to try to hold close to my heart while I'm working on these pages. So once you have your intention in mind and you've done your reflection and you're still surrounded by your objects, the next step is to gra grab some art materials. I want you to grab materials that you're really comfortable with, that you find soothing. Um, I want you to choose materials that are gonna be an extension, a natural extension of the intention that you've just set. So for me, things that are soothing for me to work with would be drawing tools as well as paints. That's just the way I lean, the, the sorts of marks that I lean into. For other people, it may be collage, it may be using words, it may be taking photographs and doing something with the photographs of your objects, it may be using watercolors or crayons or colored pencils or any combination of all of these things. I always like to remind my students, this is your, your book, your practice, you need to choose the tools and um, adjust the prompts that I provide in order to make this really serve you, okay? So gather some of your materials around and then we'll get ready to start making our marks. Okay, now that you've gathered your materials, I want you to choose your book uh, and also the page that you're going to work on. So this is a mixed media journal it's made by Ranger. It's called a Dina Wakely book, and it has a variety of different pages in it. This is the book that I'm going to work in today. And I also want you to think about the page that you're going to work on. Just because we're starting a new session, it doesn't mean that we have to work on a brand new clean page. Additionally, we do not have to work from the beginning of our journal to the next page, to the next page, and so on. You can just open your book to wherever you wish to work and just get started there. Um, there are no rules in journaling. You get to make them up yourself. So as you, as you go to your book or loose paper, if that is your choice, I want you to think about whether or not you wanna layer the marks over top of something that's already here in your book or you wanna start on a fresh page. I am going to continue to work on this page, um, the spread, that I have already got some marks laid down on because it was while I was working on this spread that the idea for this particular journal lesson came to me. So I feel like, like it's a continuation of my intention 
of inner peace and soothing because that was something that I found when I was working here. So the first thing that I want you to do after you find your page, well, I'm gonna share a little tidbit or um, tip with you as well. Um, when, you, when you choose your page, think about the kind of media that you're using on your page and if you're going to get it really wet or alter it in some way that may impact what's on the other side of the page. For instance, if I were going to get this area super wet and saturated, um, it will impact the watercolor marks that are on the opposite page. Um, so it's not that you wanna avoid that happening, you just wanna be aware of that. If um, you know the page on the opposing side is really important to you and you don't want that to change, then maybe you need to keep that in mind when you work on the verso, okay? So um, the next thing that I want you to do is choose a tool and write write your intention um, and really, really make it with clear, with, with clarity and purpose. Um, think about what that might look like with regards to the size of the letters that you're writing. Um, you know, if I were to write inner piece very tiny here along the edge, that's very different than writing it in all capitals across, across the page. So think about your style of writing, think about how dark your letters might be, think about how clear you want that message to be that you're sending out into the world. Also think about its placement. Writing the word, you know, inner peace from the bottom of the page up to the top sends um, a sense of energy and movement um, you know, growth, being rooted in something and then throwing it up into what would traditionally be the sky space in a page. Um, so really, really think, spend some time thinking about where you wanna place your words on your page, um, as well as the tool that you wanna use to get the type of, of marks or letters or darkness that you really, really love. Okay. I ended up using these Woody Stabilos as my lettering tools. These are watercolor crayons and they have a really nice thick tip. And I felt like I was really able to get some good um, energy going as I wrote these words down. The other thing that I noticed happening was, you know, as I, as I put um, my soothe and my clarity and my inner peace down, I realized that there were other intentions that came to mind, and so I gave myself permission to add them to my page. So again, I wanna remind you that as you're working on this, to lean into the personal responses that you are feeling or encountering as you step into the exercises and really allow yourself to make them your own. So then the next thing that is, you know, the next part of this exercise or this page is to now look at the objects that are significant to you and invite them onto the page in some way. Now, by in some way, what I mean is you could choose to collage them onto your page or draw or paint them. You don't even necessarily have to paint them exactly as they appear to you. You can use color swatches. You can use patterning. For instance, this um, area right here was inspired by, by this crystal, and it was just a color swatch created from that particular crystal. And you know, I can pull all of my crystals out and lay them in different areas on the page so that you can see how their colorations impacted the colors that I was actively reaching for when I was painting these color swatches. So I'm gonna encourage you or invite you to spend some time thinking about how you want to bring the elements of the objects that soothe you onto your page. And again, I wanna remind you, you can use all sorts of different types of media 
It's a matter of choosing the materials and that imbue you or infuse you with the same sorts of intentions that you have already set on the page. And also, as you begin to work your colors, your marks, your collage, whatever your items are into this page, don't feel like you have to preserve the words that you've already written down. There is no need for these to remain legible. What matters is that you wrote them down. You set that intention and you've created this space for that intention to begin to grow. Uh, so don't feel like you have to make marks that carefully preserve what you have already written. Furthermore, if you wish to, you know, pick up another tool and do some more writing, or perhaps you're creating this page on top of um, your reflection that you've already written, um, you can always add additional text or written elements to the page. Uh, the balance between visual and written is completely your own to determine and decide. So I'm going to set you free to play with your materials and I will be back with a little bit more goodness for you. All right, so we are back. And by now your page will have layers of marks on it. You'll see that after I allowed the paint to dry, I did go in and um, add some additional text from two of my favorite songs about sticking through difficult times and having faith and trusting and um, peace and kindness of human beings. Um, and so I added those lyrics to the page. They were songs that came to mind as I was working on this. Um, and if you find yourself uh, reaching for a lyric or a poem or even just uh, a, a mantra or mantra of sorts, feel free to put that on your page. You can add a prayer, whatever you wish. Um, I also want to point out that this page doesn't feel particularly pretty to me and that that is okay. You know, um, working in an art journal, we're not making anything that is going to get displayed or hung in any capacity. We are simply making marks for the value, the emotional content or the experience of um, of what they can give to us. We're not trying to create something that is pleasant to look at. Now, by all means, if that is something that soothes you or serves your original attention, you can continue to respond to the objects that you've gathered that are um, meaningful to you, as well as the design as it shows up on the page, and you can continue to refine and add more marks to it as you wish. Um, but I just want to remind you that that isn't our end goal here. Our end goal is just merely for working on or in our books as a way of personal expression. 
So when you have your page done or you feel like it is at a point where you are ready to call it finished, um, the next piece is that we are going to remove a section of the page. And, and some of you may um, resist this, this piece of the um, project. And if you really truly do not wanna cut anything out of your book, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you to respect that, but then take this particular exercise and do it on a separate piece of paper that you can use for the next step. Because what we want to do is is take part of the energy that we just infuse this spread with, and we are going to gift it to um, the to gift it to the earth. So. You know, think about a an area if you want to cut something out of the central part of your page. Maybe there is a shape that is particularly meaningful that you could cut out symbolically. You could also trim an edge off of um, one of your pages. Keep in mind that you may have content on the verso um, that you may or may not want to sacrifice. So, um, for instance, I know for certain I love this um, color sample or color swatch page. And, and I also refer back to this as it's a specific um, watercolor palette to me. So I don't wanna lose this, um, which means I probably won't cut anything off of this page or if I did, it would be down at the bottom. Um, so this page is probably more um, significant for me with regards to cutting something out. And also, if I choose to cut a window out of this page, then I'm gonna reveal what's underneath. Um, and I really like the idea of cutting a window out. So here's a couple of tips for if you're going to cut out of the middle of a page. And, and some of you may um, resist this, this piece of the um, project. And if you really truly do not want to cut anything out of your book, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you to respect that, but then take this particular exercise and do it on a separate piece of paper that you can use for the next step. Because what we want to do is, is take part of the energy that we just infuse this spread with, and we are going to gift it to, um, the, to gift it to the earth. So, you know, think about a, an area if you want to cut something out of the central part of your page. Maybe there is a shape that is particularly meaningful that you could cut out symbolically. You could also trim an edge off of um, one of your pages. Keep in mind that you may have content on the verso. Um, that you may or may not want to sacrifice. So um, for instance, I know for certain I love this um, color sample or color swatch page. And, and I also refer back to this as it's a specific um, watercolor palette to me. So I don't want to lose this, um, which means I probably won't cut anything off of this page. Or if I did, it would be down at the bottom. Um, so this page is probably more um, significant for me with regards to cutting something out. And also, if I choose to cut a window out of this page, then I'm gonna reveal what's underneath. Um, and I really like the idea of cutting a window out. So here's a couple of tips for if you're going to cut out of the middle of a page. What you wanna do is have some sort of barrier between the page that you're cutting and the rest of your book so that you don't go any further or deeper beyond this particular page. So I'm just putting a plastic placemat right here in place and then that's gonna make sure that when I cut this page, I am only cutting this page and I'm not going any more deeply into my book. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a piece of chalk to draw my design on here before I actually cut anything. Um, and that way I have sort of a plan as to where my edges are going to happen.
Now you can cut any shape that you wish. I am thinking, I want it to feel sort of like a window. So actually, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut a window into my page, but I also want the window shape to feel a little reverent. So I'm going to make it be sort of like a church window, right? Now, if it's really important to you that it be perfect, by all means, honor that. I'm okay with just stenciling it in or penciling it in this way. And I actually, I think that I want there to be a sun shape in here. No, actually, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. I think it got too busy. So because I'm working in chalk, I can just use a tissue and wipe that off. Let me just put this window shape in here and let's keep it simple. If I want the sun there, I can put it on the page that's peeking through. But I do want, no, I don't. I was thinking that I wanted some sort of grouting or window marks there. But I'm just gonna keep it simple. So I have I have a definite plan here with regards to how I'm gonna cut this. And I am going to use my little finger blade here. Um, you could use any sort of X-Acto blade or knife that you happen to have on hand. Uh, you could also go into this with a pair of scissors if you wish. If you have a heavy amount of paint on your page, you may need to use a good amount of pressure to sort of cut through. And you also, if you've worked in paint, make sure it's dry before you start the stage or you may drag your hand inadvertently through it. So now I have cut, I have cut my piece out of my page, my little chapel window. I'm gonna wipe the chalk off of it. And now when I remove my um, placemat, you can see that I actually have a window through to the page underneath. And I didn't damage this page in any way either. It's fully intact. And as an inter interesting byproduct, um, not only does the window work this way, but it also works this way. So there's a little bit of engagement in both places. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do on this is I'm going to um, write again. Um, my intention on this piece, which is soothe and peace. And I'm gonna sign it with love. And I'm now going to take this and I'm going to either tie it as a flag onto a branch in my yard, or I could roll it up and, um, oh, look at how pretty the backside is. I could roll it up and um, put a ribbon around it and bury it as an offering somewhere special in my yard. But the, the act of taking this slice of energy 
from our books, from the energy that we have just manifested for ourselves and placing it out into the world in some way is a gesture, is expanding the energies that we have just manifested for ourselves for the rest of the world. So I'm walking out to a, pace, a place where I feel a deep amount of peace and calm in my yard. And I'm at the base of a tree that I've painted a number of times. And I have my little scroll tied with a piece of biodegradable ribbon. I'm going to hold this in my hands. I'm going to say, I wish for peace and comfort for the world, for anyone who needs it, including myself. And now I'm gonna dig into the hummus that's here at the base of the tree. Sorry, <laughs> camera angle. And I'm gonna cover this up. And I'm going to imagine my wish traveling up through the arms of this tree into the sky and to whomever needs it. All right, I'm back in the studio and I am here with my journal and I still have a collection of objects of significance and um, comfort surrounding me and I am going to finish today's session for myself up with a little bit more reflection in my um, written diary as I look at these objects and I think about the, the trajectory of what I thought and felt during the day as I worked on, on this page spread. I wanna remind you too, um, even though earlier in the lesson I said, you know, we got to a stage with this page where we felt it was finished and therefore we cut or removed a section of what we had created in order to place it outside as an offering. Really, the page is never, the spread is never really finished. It, it will sit here, it will wait for me to come back and add marks to it, respond to it, um, or even just sit and look at it and remember the way it made me feel um, during this time frame. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to date this page, um, probably over here in the corner. Uh, and that gives me a um, sort of record of when I created it, but I can also go back and add additional dates to it should I add additional layers to the page as well. So thank you so much for journaling with me. And I hope that this practice I shared with you today is an aid in helping you to carve out some sanctity, some peace, and some comfort at a time when our world does not seem to be very generous with it. Thank you so much and be well.